Taxes, especially in the black community, we just don't, you know, discuss right. enough. All we have is a checking in the savings. Right. Checking in the savings. <laughs> and a save at the house, maybe. Yeah. Right. Under the mattress. Right, yeah. Yeah. right. So, I'm... I'm Today, whenever this airs, but the day June 8th, Eight. June 8th, 8th yep. is the one year anniversary <coughs> for Law of Tarks. Let's can give we it put, up. Can we put one in the sky? Yeah, yeah we keep the sky. we put one in the sky my, for that? With my water and everything. It's yeah. up. It's up. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your, it's your boys, your cousins, your nephews, your favorite guys. We're here. Law of Tarks, thank you once again for always uh, supporting and That's watching. Good. I just got it. I just got it. Relax. <laughs> so thank you for supporting changed. and watching. Um, we have a, a very special guest in the house today, Mr. Todd Davis. Let's give it up for Todd Davis. Uh, Todd is a friend, a brother, uh, and someone who's been important in the lives of, I believe, many people on this couch. Uh, and he's going to tell you why he's important to us and what he does. And, and thank you for coming and joining us, man. Welcome, welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Um, Appreciate you guys bringing me on the show today to, to kind of talk about what I do and you know the the importance of that um, mm -hmm. to our community uh, is something that I've not kind of talked about, talked about enough. Okay. You know, as far as finances. Um, but um, yeah, I knew all I knew all you guys, and uh, you know, when, when it comes to finances, especially in the black community, we just don't. You know, discuss right. it enough. All we have yeah. is a checking in the savings. Right. Checking in the savings. <laughs> and a save at the house, maybe. Yeah. Right. Under the mattress. Right, yeah. right. So right. I'm, I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, logos that match and hat and shirt. Talk to me what's going on. Yeah, there. I'm just, um, you know, loud and proud with uh, with FMU, uh, <laughs> Samaritan University. That's, that's, that's where I got my undergrad degree in business management. Uh, so, so I'm proud of that. They sent me a, a care package this week, so I'm... Oh, word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to place me. Yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but, hey, but you guys called me and you know, so I said I'm gonna go ahead and, and represent um, you know my, my university. Absolutely. But, yeah. yeah. But once again, thank you, thank you for joining, thank you for um, supporting, and uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So we're talking about yeah, we're talking about finances. I'm, I'm gonna take over first. Please second. do. Please. <clears throat> I'm gonna take over for a second. So we're gonna talk about <laughs> financing with Todd. Um, Todd is my financial advisor. Um, but Todd, we want to ask you a couple of questions. Like, how long have you been uh, in this industry? And, um, first and foremost, and just tell us a little bit about what you actually do uh, with financial uh, advising. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm a financial advisor. I uh, I've been in uh, the role actively ever since 2015. Um, you know, so that's when I got licensed. So, in order to be a you know a financial advisor to give advice, you have to. You know, uh, is that the Series Seven and the all Series that? Series Seven, okay. Series Sixty Six, oh, um, okay. and all that good stuff, insurance license, and all that. Um, I started my career with uh, with Edward Jones. Okay. Um, you know, so they had a, a pretty good program where they, you know, brought me in, and you know, they they allowed for me to get licensed and everything. Um, and and with that, I kind of transitioned, and, and now I'm with the you know a large bank here in Charlotte, um, doing my thing with them. I've been with them for about five years now. So I got licensed in 2015. Um, and, and I'm still doing that now, helping folks with retirement, 401k rollovers. Mm -hmm. um, basically, any, anything where you're looking to, you know, grow your money, yeah. you know, outside of a traditional like bank account, like a savings or a checking account. You know, we can put your money to work in, you know, um, an IRA, look at stocks and bonds, annuities, what, what have you, to, to to allow your money to grow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what I do right now. So what's the one thing you'll say that? <clears throat> when new clients come to you that they're, you know, not knowledgeable about. Like, I'm gonna use myself for example. I remember when I first started with you, I didn't understand how to trade and what to put my money in, what stocks to purchase. Mm -hmm. And of course you educated me on that, but um, for somebody that's new mm -hmm. that comes to you, like how do you educate them <coughs> on, you know, how to invest in stocks, bonds, or whatever, IRA or, um, 
Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I take an approach. You know, um, I, I try to meet you know my clients and potential clients where they are. You know, everyone has a different you know knowledge base. You know, so. Um, but but when I when I see when I talk to my clients, you know, or potential clients, um, I just start off with the basics. You know, what do you what do you know about finance? You know, have you ever traded before? Have you do you have a Robinhood account? Um, you know, do you have a Charles Schwab account that you do your own trading? Have you ever bought a stock before? What was right. up with that? Uh, not to cut you off. Yeah, the Amazon split to twenty one. Yeah. Well, talk to me about that real quick. Yeah, so my boy sent me a text and said buy Amazon. And I bought some. Yeah, yeah. Split is, is just, you know, corporations do that um, in order to kind of raise money. It's a good sign when corporations do that. That means they have, you know, growth potential in okay. the future. Uh, it just makes the stock price cheaper when they right. do a split. Right. Right. So it's, it's basically like if you had, you know, a $20 bill um, and if, you know, you split that $20 bill into, you know, two tens, that's basically what they do with the with the shares. Right. Uh, so, okay. so, for example, if you owned, you know, um, you know, uh, two shares of uh, Amazon before the split. The, the, the shares were at about twenty four hundred dollars. Right, right. Per uh, per share. Uh, so they did a, I believe it was a, it was a twenty for one. Twenty for one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So so if you if you owned you know uh, two shares, then you now you would own forty shares mm -hmm. uh, of the stock, right? Ah. Uh, but but really no difference in. You know uh, anything? It's just that it's cheaper. You know, for retail investors to come in and, and purchase. So for the for the what's the benefit for the retail investor? Like, don't don't buy an Amazon <coughs> stock at two hundred and expect it to be two thousand in two weeks, right? Right. Facts. Okay. Facts. You can't expect that. Yeah. Um, if you can, if you could have, you know, bought it before the. Um, the split that would have been good because you know new money is coming in now, right? right? Because it's cheaper to buy. So folks that you know trade, you know, uh, on, on Robinhood or you know uh, individual investors, they're able to um, you know come in and purchase the stock now. It's about a hundred, I think it's about one hundred and twenty dollars a share or something like that. That's what I checked somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so so it just it just poses an opportunity for everyday investors to, to come in and buy it at a cheaper price. Let me, uh, let me ask hold, you. Hold on, hold on. Please, please. please. You, you ask me about Amazon. Uh, no, because... No, 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 wait a minute. No, 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 wait a minute. That's a great question. Yeah. Forget all your points. Because <laughs> they, they're more mature than me. Yeah. But what do you say to the person who knows shit about shit? Stocks, <laughs> bonds, whatever. Like, trading. That's literally how you started. Like, Here we go. Like, how do you know, how do you know, <laughs> you know <laughs> what to trade on? How do you know what to purchase? How do you know what's good? How do you know what's not good? Because right. I'm speaking from a person who doesn't do none of this. Right, oh, you gotta so, pay the man to do that. No, you but, try to give his business. No, no, but I'm just saying, like, how do you know <laughs> what to do and like where to start? Is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. So when it when it comes to because that, all this Bitcoin and stuff, like, there's yeah. a lot of people out here like me that mm -hmm. don't know none of this. Like, right. So it's like, how do you know what's right? Where do you start? Yeah, you you start first off with the foundations, right? So the foundations are is saving money, right? That that's where you start. So you save to invest, right? So when it comes to you know investing, you know first and foremost, you know you want to make sure you have an emergency reserve, right? So anytime I talk to a you know an exciting you know new client, maybe 20, 21 years old, you know um, fresh out of college, yeah. they, they want to you know take on the world. Um, and they want to invest money for the future, you know, the first conversation I have is, okay, well, let's look at your income versus your expenses, right? So income versus expenses, you know, if, if someone, if you spend, you know, $2,000 a month to live, that means you need to have at least, you know, uh, $6,000, you right. know, three months yeah. emergency reserve first <clears throat> before, you, before you really look to invest. So it's kind of like how the apartment complexes be like, you got to make two or three times as much as you want in order for you to get it. Yeah, yeah, you, you need to have that foundation because... You know, when you invest money, um, it, it's not an overnight thing, really. You know, so when you invest money, you know, we always tell my clients it's, it's at least a three-year minimum, okay. you know, that you're going to leave this money invested here. That's that's how you get the most bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. When you invest money is, is to, you know, allow your funds to sit in there over the long term. That's where you, you know, really get the benefit. And so a, a new investor coming in that has never invested before, I first have that, that conversation around, you know, saving money. Because, you know, if you get in the mindset of saving, you know, putting money aside, then you'll, 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 you'll find, you know, success, you know, uh, with investments. Because you allow your money to sit and grow. And so, so, all right, so let me ask you this. I've heard people that say, in order to invest money, you have to have money that you're willing to lose. Is that true or not? I wouldn't say willing to lose. I would say willing to allow to just be off it on the on, on the back, right? right? The back burner. So right? it's money that you necessarily don't need. Don't need right now, okay, right? So right. that's the, that's where the importance of 
you know, look at your income and expenses. Make sure you have more coming in than going out. Right. Make sure you have, you know, a strong savings account set up for yourself. Um, and then from there, you can springboard into, you know, investing your money. Um, and we typically say the easiest way to get invested if you have, you're starting at a low dollar amount. Um, we typically, I typically say, you know, if you're invested with like a financial advisor, say you, you talk to someone, you know, a financial advisor wants you to have at least three to 5,000, you know what I'm saying, on top of your emergency <laughs> reserve, you know, before you start investing money with them because at the end of the day, financial advisor, he's here to make money, right? So he, he, he's not gonna really be able to make any money on, on you know, three to five thousand dollars of an investment if you're starting at that point. But um, I, I help clients all the time at that dollar point because I know how important how important it is. You yeah. know, for for us, especially when I'm talking to you know someone in our community, you know, the importance of getting started right, right somewhere. Okay. Um, if they have those, you know, they've laid the foundation with their savings and everything. Um, and I, I typically say that if you're you know starting out, you know, you want to purchase a mutual fund. Right? Do y'all know what a mutual fund is and how that works? Enlighten the people. Just say it. Earth uh, term. I mean, I know what it is, but I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So a mutual fund um, is just basically an investment that has a group of, you know, stocks and or bonds in it. So kind of the um, analogy I use when I explain this to my clients is, you know, imagine. Dumb it down. Cause, yeah. yeah, imagine you're on the 100th floor of a building, right? And you uh, and 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 you're, there's an elevator, right? So one elevator has one support cable, the other elevator has 100 support cables, right? So support cables, we want to go ahead and uh, uh, make the analogy that that's a stock, right? So that elevator that has one support cable, if you were to go out and buy, you know, one share of Amazon or you know one share of uh, Google or whatever, and that company fails, then you lose all the money that you invested in there, right? So if right. you put you know, if you before the split, if you bought one share of Amazon at twenty four hundred, and Amazon for whatever reason you know went belly up, then it would go down to zero. You would lose all your money that you had invested with right. Amazon, right? So with the mutual fund, that's the elevator that has those one hundred support cables in it. So you have Amazon in there, you have Google in there, you'd have um, Apple, you know, uh, Nvidia, all these different companies in there to kind of hold it up. You know, so if, if one company fails, you have, you know, 99 other companies are, are so in that portfolio to kind of, you know, keep it afloat. So that's the easiest, most simplest way to get started with investing. You know, um, and if you're starting off and you're younger, you want to, you know, look at, you know, a stock focused, um, you know, mutual fund, you know, growth oriented mm -hmm. mutual fund. Yeah. yeah. So that's basically what a mutual fund is. Yeah. Am I allowed to ask questions? Go ahead. <laughs> like Derek, a book on this. Derek, do you have a yeah. question? Yeah. First? Um, so, from from that from that analogy, you're one of the I guess one of the biggest things that you could actually say is that if you are going to invest, diversifying your portfolio would probably be the perfect. Best part yeah, that. yeah. So if you you know, and that's what a mutual fund is. This is diversifier, right? So you don't have all your eggs in one basket. Um, so you go out and you buy one individual stock. You know, you know that company could go belly up. But if you if you you know invest in a reputable company, Amazon. Apple, Google, you know, th these companies aren't going anywhere. Walmart, right? These companies aren't going anywhere. These are strong companies. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, to kind of protect yourself on the downside, you want to have something that's diversified, you know, um, especially if you're just starting out, you know? So we talked about this in like previous episodes about how important um, having like classes on uh, credit and mm -hmm. investing, um, like, in your company, is that something that you guys like would go out and teach mm -hmm. to different communities um, to help them be more aware mm -hmm. uh, of you know how how to handle credit? To be numbers? honest, no. Um, you know, and I, I've I've had you know I've done a, a talk. I've only done one talk, and you know it was encouraged by my company to to have that talk with some teenagers in, in my hometown. Um, Mount Corner, South Carolina. Hey, yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah, so, 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 so I had a. You ain't from no Mount Corner. Nobody ever heard of St. Stephen. That's all right. We got it. Tell your story. Tell your story. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's encouraged, you know, because it's just. You don't know what you don't know, you know what I mean? And so um, that's what I strive to do. I try to, 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 to teach as many people as I can about the importance of. You know, investing. You know the importance of saving because over time, you know, if if you are you know preparing, especially when you're younger, um, you're, you're setting yourself up for, for success later on, yeah. right? And um, I always tell folks as well, if you if you're working at a job and they're offering a 401k, this is huge. 
you know, you need to be participating in it, and you say need, that again, Ty. You need to be participating in it, yeah. right? And if they're if they're offering you a match, right? If 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 a um, you're working at a company and they and they say we're going to give you a four percent match, you need to make sure you're at least contributing four percent to that four hundred one k because it's, it's like you're just leaving, you know, it's free money, free money, free money, right? Yeah. Free money. Yeah. right, right. Um, here, here on Love Talks, we not only want to find out about what you do, but we are interested in who you are. So, mm -hmm. I'm reading this book. Uh, it's, well, I'm listening to this book. Audible is also reading the book, y'all. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Just, so, I'm, I'm listening to this book. It's called Millionaire Mindset. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the importance of not only understanding your money blueprint, but also your parents' money blueprint. Mm -hmm. And your industry and based on your demographics is not something that's normally taught, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in how did you even get interested in this world? Right, right. You know yeah, that's a good question, man. Um, you know, to be honest, you know, I kind of got started with this, um, you know, my, my dad, really. Um, so my dad, he, he's, a, he's a practicing attorney um, in, in Moss Corner, South Carolina. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, he, I, I remember uh, growing up and uh, he, I think I was maybe in high school or whatever, and uh, he said, um, you know, you need to get in the stock market, son. You need to get in the stock market because, you know, um, that's where you make money at. And uh, he had been invested with Edward Jones. And I asked him, you know, later on in life, I was like, he, he said, I'll, I'll give y'all, I'll give y'all money. If y'all, if y'all, you know, get on, go to the child swap account and y'all, and you invest money there, I'll, I'll, I'll help wow. you out. I'll give you a couple dollars, right? Wow. Um, and so that, that, kind of opened me up like well, if he's so crazy about this something you know, <laughs> you know something must be you know wow. so, so I, yeah. I did a little research or whatever but I still wasn't you know fully interested in it but later on you know I asked him about that after I became a financial advisor I said dad well, why did you how'd you know about it because he came up from humble beginnings yeah. you know I said well, how did you know about it he said I, I think he said that he was just you know talking to some colleagues he had some extra oh. cash oh. and he walked into a financial advisor's office right he wow. walked into a financial, financial advisor's office and um they set him up with investments, and, and that's what he did, you know. So, wow. so, so that's what got, you know, him invested. He just w was curious to know there's something else other than just putting your money in a savings account, mm -hmm. you know, or an interest checking account that, or a CD that doesn't pay anything. Right. Um, you know, th there's other things out there to help you with growing your money. Let, um, me, let me also ask you this follow-up question. <coughs> At what point did it make sense to you? Cause I, met, I I hear that your dad is he yeah it didn't, sense, it, point, it, 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 it didn't make sense at that point uh, I would say that uh, it didn't make sense to me until you know I was I was studying for my MBA here at Queens mm. in Charlotte and um, you know at, at that same time I was working as a uh, home preservation specialist at Wells Fargo okay um, and in that job it was very challenging because you know as a home preservation specialist you're tasked with That's how we met. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Have you met yeah, at Wells yeah, Fargo, yeah. right? Right. <laughs> in that role, and so in that job, you're tasked with, you know, um, getting the information from the borrowers who's trying to stay in their home. Yeah. This is after the 2008, 2009 yeah. financial crisis, when, when meltdown, the mortgage yeah. meltdown. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, in that role, you know, I, I, you know, I had to communicate to a lot of people, you know, that they would have to leave their homes. You know, they'd have to either mm. sell their home with a short sale, do a deed in lieu, or be foreclosed upon because, you know, they couldn't afford to stay in the house anymore. Sheesh. Right? And so in that it's role... A tough conversation, brother. Very tough conversation. And in that role, my job was to, you know, gather the information, give it to the underwriter. Yep. The underwriter would then, you know, let me know if they were denied or approved. Um, and I had to communicate that, you know, to them, you know, and, and, and you know, folks crying on the phone, you know, folks, you know... Uh, you know, just upset, and, and and in doing that, it really, um, I felt like I didn't have any control, right? I'm mm. just I'm just gathering information, mm. giving it to an underwriter, and telling you you're denied, or telling you, you, you know, you, you're not gonna be able to stay in your home. Um, mm. In those rare instances, I did have, you know, a conversation where they were be approved, um, but I learned so much in that role, um, and, and I was also studying for my MBA at the same time. Yeah. Um, and then, and then studying for my MBA, you know, they were teaching us about the time value of money and and, mm. and, and and investing in the stock market and the importance of it. And my colleagues and my classmates were investing. That's like a no-brainer for them. Like you know, it was just like, they, they, they knew that, they knew that about needs it. Needs to be general education, it, right? Right. right, right. Not master of business, business, bro. Yeah, we talk about that all yeah, the time. It's crazy, crazy, man. We yeah, had master's yeah. program, and I, I went to the master's program to look at finance to to kind of learn more about it and get an inside scoop. 
in it, you know, on it, and um, you know, and so that's when I, you know, so upon completing my master's program, um, you know, that's when the Edward Jones opportunity kind of presented itself, and I, you know, I said, well, this is an opportunity for me to help people, um, and especially folks in our community um, that don't know about it. You know, I can kind of be someone that they could talk to, feel comfortable talking to yeah. about finances. Um, and about growing their money, you know, so that's that's why, you know, that's kind of how I got into it, you know Yeah, my dad kind of introduced me to it, you know, he was, you know, invested with Edward Jones and everything But it really was 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 at that point when I was, was working and living here in Charlotte working as a home preservation specialist um, And just trying to make my way here in Charlotte and, and just learn as I go and you know I saw it as an opportunity to to help you know, yeah. okay. let me ask. Let me ask the fellas a, a follow-up question. Let me ask the fellas. A, 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 really? Let me ask the fellas a follow-up question. So, when, as Todd was was speaking, and I asked him uh, what made it make sense, we always hear, "I wish I would have known back then what I know now." Right? Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this: Do y'all think y'all would have been mature enough to handle you coming to to an eighteen-year-old Rudy right now? Like that, do you think 18 would have been mature enough to handle? You know what I'm saying? Does that, that question make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, back then, no. But I think if you, if my dad would have <clears throat> did the same thing that Todd dad did and show me. Yeah. Like if you show me, I think the one thing is if my dad would have came to me and said. But I, Todd I, said it didn't make sense until you went to school. Though. Yeah. I, and, and, and it doesn't because we, we, we got to also think about the surrounding of our friends, like our age, right? We get a hundred dollars in our hand. We ain't going. That's what George's got. Yeah, exactly. and, that's, and that's why Reeboks was selling yeah. them, them soldiers. <laughs> yeah. black, so the black and white. Band. So so we don't yeah, we don't so we don't think oh, about that. Saying. But at the same time, <laughs> we go, what y'all was doing there? At the same time, these niggas they want to talk about shoes. <laughs> at the same time, we like we literally we don't think about that. Um, at all, I just lost my train of thought because he's talking about okay. sneakers. You're right. You're right. No, you <laughs> uh, say you get a hundred dollars. No, yeah, you get a hundred. You're not going to invest fifty. But if you, if it's in schools, like if you start that at fifth grade, fourth grade, whatever, right, and start talking about money and how to invest money at that age, and then you get to a point where you're in middle school, high school, you're mature enough to 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 know that you can invest. I get a hundred dollars for my birthday. Just like we do 10% to give to God, right? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I do 20% in a 401k or or to start something like that. Yeah. It's something that we just have to talk up. My mom and dad talk, told me about it too when I was younger. Like They always told me to put my money aside. Mm -hmm. But again, my mindset was, yeah. oh, I'm going to have the fly shoes. I'm going to wear clothes mm -hmm. and polos. But now, I'm like, I threw away thousands and thousands of dollars on clothes for what that I can't even wear no more. I think one thing that's also important is is how it's taught to us. Mm -hmm. I think be knowing what you know now, knowing at 16 year old you when your dad first introduced it to you, mm -hmm. maybe if he would have taught it a little different, maybe mm -hmm. he would have caught. Like I think about my my godson. He's watching Gracie Corner's uh, video, mm -hmm. and they teach the alphabet and counting, but they put trap music and all that. So. Like yeah. we, and it's a funny meme on social media. My wife showed me, mm -hmm. like the girl turning up to it. Like it's right. just a different way of learning the right. alphabet. So right. if we just implement a different way of learning mm -hmm. that type of stuff, like mm -hmm. how would eighteen-year-old Todd receive mm -hmm. how to start with you now? You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Right. That's you, what we got. You got adults do. today that don't know the difference between an asset and a liability. Yep. Right. right. So. And, and honestly, I'm not, I can't be mad at them. I can't fault them for not knowing that because if you were, you never took a class or were in college to, to learn asset and liability and you would never learn it, mm -hmm. right? But it's, it's our, it's up to us. And that's why I asked about um, his company allowing them to go and speak because uh -huh. I think it's important to speak at high schools, middle schools, colleges to have those conversations early rather than wait till they get in the real world and they don't know to mm -hmm. put in that 4% match with their company. Right. Because, you know, same thing. When I was with Sherwin-Williams, it was the same thing. We had a 6% match. But at the same time, I did, right before I left, I did, a, we had Fidelity come in and speak. Man, in that room, at least 20 people did not know that they had a 6% match. So you done been with the company 5, 10 years and you ain't been matching? Yeah. Like, you done lost all this money. Right. Right. right? Yeah. But 
they weren't educated on it. When you get a job, know. you don't read, oh, 6% match. You read what your salary exactly. is. Right? Exactly. Right? Exactly. So we don't focus yeah. on that. But it's important to, to learn those things. And Todd used to get on me, and I, I'm going to be very transparent. Todd used to get on me a while ago. Like, Yo, bro, you got this photography business. Go ahead and let's set up this account. And I drug my feet for a long time. And finally, I did it. But at the end of the day, I tell Todd all the time, I don't never want to see what's in that account, yeah. ever, right? Yeah. I know money going in there every month, but I don't want to see nothing. Yeah. I don't want to see no statement. I don't see want to see what I'm winning or what I'm losing. Yeah. Nothing, right? And, and, and when you invest, that's kind of what you need to do, you know? And so I, I think sometimes with investments and uh, with, 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 with people in general, you know, we're, we're human, right? So we want to control. And uh, when it comes to investments, you know, um, your money will grow. Right, if if you just put it aside, you know, put it in a, in a in a reputable mutual fund or you know stock or whatever, you know, over time your your money will, will realize you know it goes up and down, but the market always goes up over right. time, right? right. Um, you know, and so uh, yeah, so to to Rudy's point, you know, he, he's he's exactly right. The, yeah. the sooner you get started, the better, you know. So I know I was harassing you, especially oh, yeah, when, no. when I first started with Evan Jones. No, I was just no, 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 no. <laughs> and for me. I wanted somebody to look like me because Todd dumbed it down for me too. I understood some of it, yeah. but he dumbed it down to, to my understanding. And not only that, he's somebody I trust right, with my right. life. That's, that's so, important as well. And, that, and that's the most important as a financial advisor is making sure you got somebody you trust. Because yeah, yeah. if you don't, you don't know what they're doing with your money. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, so, I also feel like even when your dad told you about it, like the excitement that he had when he said it to you mm -hmm. made you think, why are you so excited about it? Right, it made you yeah. curious. And I think as as black folks and when it comes to finances and things like that, they always tell you save your money. It's like you yeah. you, you know you never you want to save your money for a rainy day or, right. or hardships or whatever the case may be. But if our parents were to tell us, hey, save your money but also put aside money so you can invest. Yeah. Whether they know why or not, but if they, if they know that you you'll get money or you know yeah. it can help for education, like the five twenty nine plans, which I'm pretty sure you know about that mm -hmm. and all of that, but it's just like if they give us the excitement or let us know that hey if you do this you will see a return on your money yeah, i think it'll it'll give us more of a it'll give give us more excitement to be like you know maybe i should invest my money maybe yeah. should, i should learn a little bit more about the stock market right. or finances yeah. things like that so mm -hmm. and it's all it's all about timing I'll, I'll share this quick story is like my granddad is in his 90s and my granddaddy like the way our our little area is we got a whole street Right, where all my family members stay on. Like, the, oh, wow. the, literally, the street is named after my family, right? My granddaddy secured all that land and had that for all his kids. But I say all that to say this, he told me a while ago, this is when I was in high school, when I was in high school, he was just like, if you get paid, even if it's 20, $25 that you put aside, every time you get paid, and just let it build up, right? He showed me, and this is just not him not investing, because of course he's, much older, mm -hmm. but just to see what he had in his safe, I'm thinking it was anywhere between twenty and thirty thousand dollars that mm -hmm. he just had in cash. I was like, man, if he would have invested this money, mm -hmm. right? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But at the same time, that goes to show me, like even back in the day, he had to already had that mindset that every paycheck, I'm gonna take a little something out of it mm -hmm. and save it. I'm not gonna spend this on nothing else, mm -hmm. right? We call it an emergency fund, but at the same time, that's the same thing you would do to. To invest, so. But how do you say that to the average person who's probably living paycheck to paycheck? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's it's easy yeah. to say to invest when you got money to the side, you know that you're probably you probably not start looking at. But how do you yeah. how do you say that to? It's a lot of people out there that's probably in that position where they're mm -hmm. like, yo, how do I start? Like, right. I have a check and I have a savings. Mm -hmm. Now you're saying I need something else. Like yeah. so, how do you mm -hmm. like how do you start that? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, I just say, you know, you, you just have to start somewhere. Yeah. If it's ten dollars yep. a month. You know, and, and as long as you're it could be all, you know, we spend money on things that we don't necessarily need on a month to month basis. Right, Let's right, be right. honest. For everybody. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. So so everybody can say Yeah, you heard about them boys, we them boys, yeah, we bad. We smoking on that hookah, just make sure that he get passed.